All right, what up folks? It's your man, 100 Days of Summer. In this video, we're gonna jump right into part two of For Now We See Through a Mirror Darkly. All right, I'm gonna pick up where I left off at last time, um, which was 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Remember, we have gone through all of this already and I showed you all of the parallels, um, how perfect is the same as the love, which is the same as becoming a man, which is the same as face to face which is the same as knowing even as you are also known, right? So I showed you the similarities between that and how the in part is the same as doing the works without the love, which is the same as being a child, which is the same as seeing through a glass darkly, right? Um, and then and knowing in part. And then I also showed how seeing through a glass darkly, uh, the word glass here is actually mirror. Right, I scroll down, I can show you a mirror. The mirrors were made not of glass, but of steel. So the word glass there is a bad translation. So it says, for now we see through a mirror. And then the word darkly was an enigma. An enigma is an obscure sand, an enigma, a riddle, an obscure sand. So when we look at this, actually what Paul is saying is, for now we see through a mirror in an enigma but then face to face. So if we're seeing, looking in a mirror, not a glass, right? If we're looking in a mirror, what are we seeing? Our face. If it's a dark mirror, what are we not seeing? Our face. If it's an enigma, what are we seeing? Our face in a riddle, a parable, something that needs to be solved in order to know what it actually is. And when that happens, it says then face to face. So face to face is solving that parable, solving that riddle, that enigma, and then seeing your face in the mirror, what you actually are. That is the opposite of knowing in part. Seeing what you actually are is knowing even as also I am known. So to, to be known, you have to know. In order to know, you have to solve the riddle of what you actually are. Then I showed the parallel <coughs> of Jesus saying this in the Gospel of Thomas. All right. Um, it says, if those leads you say, look to the look, look, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the sky will precede you. If they say to you, it is in the sea, then the fish of the sea, or the, then the fishes will precede you. Rather, the kingdom is inside of you and outside of you. When you come to know yourselves, then you will be known and you will realize that you are the children of the living father. But if you do not come to know yourselves, then you exist in poverty and you are poverty, right? Poverty is the opposite of the kingdom. Just like Paul says, you know, you might be the heir of all, but as long as you are a child, remember we talked about what a child is here. As long as you are a child, you, even though you are the heir of all, you are no different than a slave. That's what Paul says in Galatians. I believe it's either Galatians or Ephesians. You might be the heir of all, but as long as you are a child, you are no different than a slave at when you become a man or of four ages, when you inherit the kingdom. That's what Paul talks about, too. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Same thing um, talked about in Ephesians. At, let me find that. I'll be right back. OK, this is Galatians 4. 1. It says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differed nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage of the elements under the world. But when the fullness of time has come, God for sent forth his son, made of a woman made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, where thou art no more a servant, but a son, if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. It's saying the exact same thing. The poverty is being the child on the child level. Once you become a man, you inherit the kingdom. It's the same exact thing that is synonymous with when you come to know yourselves or what Paul is saying here, when you solve this enigma of the mirror and then you are face to face, it's the exact same thing. Then you will be known as Paul says here. But then shall I know even as also I am known. It's the exact same thing. 
you will know that you are children of the father. What Paul was talking about, the adoption, the exact same thing Jesus was talking about when he says flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. That's that's realizing that your spirit came from the spirit is being born again, realizing that you are the children of the living father. It's the exact same thing. This is why he only talked about the mysteries of the kingdom, the kingdom that is within you, because within you, the, the kingdom is the same thing as your spirit is the same thing. So to recognize that the kingdom is within you is to also uh, know to be to you will come to know yourselves. Then you will be known. It's the same thing to recognize that the kingdom is within you is to come to know yourselves and then you will be known. You are known by the kingdom, the, the spirit that is already within you, the, the 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 son of God that is already within you knows you waiting for you to come to this realization that the son of God is within you. That your spirit is the son of God. That is why you're looking in the glass darkly. Until you figure that out, you're not known. Until you figure it out, you're just a child. Until you figure it out, you haven't had a face to face. You only know in part. That's what, that's clearly what's being said. That's what, that's clearly what I see. Let me put it that way. Now we go to Matthew 7. It says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Here we go again, talking about the kingdom, right? But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, for many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in that name and in that in thy name have have cast out uh, devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess to them. I never knew you depart from me. You you that work iniquity. I never knew you never knew you when you come to know yourselves, then you will be known. I never knew you, though you were able to do all of these works. I never knew you because you never knew yourself. Just like Paul says, he talks about doing all those works, but not being love, not having love. And then I showed you how love is the same thing as knowing or discovering what the, the face in the mirror is and then knowing even as you are known. You see that consistent theme. So if you don't know, you won't be known. In order to know, you have to solve the enigma of the mirror that you're looking into. You have to figure out what and who and, and exactly what you are. And then that is the face to face. Now let's go to numbers. I'm going to show you this again. This is numbers 12, eight it says, uh, let me see. Okay. Numbers 12, six. And he said, hear now my words. If this is God speaking to Miriam and Aaron, Moses, his brother and sister. And here he says, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. A vision is a day dream. It is a symbolic thing, something that has to be interpreted. A dream is a night dream, right? It's But it's a symbolic thing. It has to be interpreted. It's a coded vision. It's a coded uh, theatrical witnessing that you see with your eyes right my servant moses is not so who was faithful in all my house with him i will speak mouth to mouth you know what it means when he says mouth to mouth face to face with him i will speak face to face what do we hear but then face to face and i'm gonna show you this again but with him speak face to face even apparently and not in dark speeches dark speeches what does that sound like glass darkly Dark speeches, dark speeches. What does this word dark speeches mean? We'll look at it. Not in dark speeches and the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. So let's look at this. Let's go through this and look at these actual words. Mouth to mouth, right? Pay. That's the word pay means mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches. What is a dark speech? A riddle, difficult question, parable, enigmatic saying or question, perplexing saying, question what did, what is darkly what does darkly mean enigma it's the same thing it's the opposite what what did god say this was i will make myself known in visions and dreams right uh but not so with my servant moses not visions and dreams with him i speak mouth to mouth not in dark speeches mouth to mouth is the opposite of dark speeches with dark speeches we just saw as riddles parables enigmas we just saw here through the glass darkly is the opposite of face to face. Mouth to mouth is the opposite of riddles. Here we see face to face is the opposite of riddles. Same thing. Same thing. And what does Moses get to see? The similitude of the Lord. That's the difference. What does uh, 
What do you see here through a glass darkly? But here face to face. What is that similitude that is being witnessed? What are you seeing? If you're looking in the mirror and you remove the veil, the, the glass darkly, if you remove the enigma, if you solve the enigma and you see your face, then you are beholding the similitude of the Lord. Now I'll show you this again. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Not his servant, his friend. Paul, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. That's why you have to be born again in order for the glass to no longer, the mirror to no longer be dark in order for it to become illuminated so that you can then see in the mirror and behold the similitude of the Lord. And I'm going to show you this again. But here we have Paul talking about Moses. Here, let me start here. Seeing that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Plainness of speech. Let me just look at the plainness of speech. Freedom in speaking, unreserved in speech, open frankly, without concealment, without ambiguity. That without the use use of figures and comparisons, this is speak make, saying that we are not speaking as Moses who put on the veil. The, what he's saying is we are not using parables. We are not using dark sayings because you see here it says that where was it? Uh, it says and afterward all the children of Israel came nigh says when Moses went in before the Lord he spake with him and took off the veil until he came out and when he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that's when he would he would put the veil over his face right so his face was shining so he put a veil over his face when he spoke uh until to the children of Israel until he spoke with God that's when he took off the veil and spoke with God face to face so what Paul is saying here is not as Moses, we use great plainness of speech. We don't use dark sayings or parables or concealed speeches or figures and comparisons. Not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. So the veil symbolizes the figures, the comparisons, the concealment of speech. It's the opposite of plainness of speech. Just like what God said in, in Numbers, the opposite of face to face or mouth to mouth is dark speeches. Same thing. So not as Moses was put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the end of that which is abolished. That which is abolished is the dark mirror. That's what's, that's what's abolished. The dark sands. That's what's abolished. That's what the veil represents. It says, but their minds were blinded for unto this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in a reading of the Old Testament. So what is he saying? That when they read the Old Testament, there's a veil over it that stops them from actually being able to see what it says. The dark mirror. The veil is an enigma. It hides the truth like a parable. Jesus says, I speak parables so that they don't know the mystery. It's the same thing. The dark glass, the enigmatic mirror is the same thing. So he put a veil over his face so that they couldn't see that. That veil still remains on the Old Testament to this day when it's being read. This is what Paul is saying. That veil is done away in Christ. Now, what is Christ? What is Christ? What is the opposite of the veil? Face to face. The veil is done away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, I didn't have time to go through it, but if you read this clearly, he does another comparison and contrast between the written letter and the spirit. The spirit is the Lord. That's what he's going to say down here. So the written letter is the opposite of the spirit, which is the opposite. The, the spirit is the opposite of the veil. The written letter is the veil. The opposite of the veil is the face. The face is the same thing as the spirit. So I, I, I didn't get a chance to go through all that because I think it would have made it too confusing. But nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So how is the veil taken away? When you turn to the Lord, what is the Lord? It says it right here, the opposite of the glass darkly. 
Oh wait, I lost my spot. Okay, so the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. Th that spirit that he's talking about is up at the top. The spiritual understanding of the word, the opposite of the dead letter. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now this is the part that I wanted to get to, but I wanted to preface it with, with the other part. But we all with open face behold as in a glass. Remember we looked at this word glass before, right? What did it actually mean? Mirror. This word open face means unveiled. We all with unveiled face behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. Now I'm going to, in, in part four of this, I'm going, I'll probably be able to cover more so what the spirit of the Lord is, but flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. It's very, I've already covered it in the being born again video, but we, so let's look at this because people won't believe me that that's what it says, but we all with open and a calypto. Calypto means veil. Open face means to unveil or uncover by drawing back a veil. So when it says we all with open face, it means unveiled face, just like Moses, who spoke with God face to face. So we all with unveiled face behold as in a glass. Let's look this word up. To show in a mirror, to make, to reflect, to mirror, to look at oneself in a mirror, to behold oneself in a mirror. <laughs> it clear. All right. So now let's reread this with the words that we have. But we all with open face, unveiled face, behold as behold one's reflection in a mirror, which is the glory of the Lord and are changed into the same image from glory to glory. Why did Moses put a veil on his face in the first place? It's because he asked God to see his glory. What did God say to him? I'll show you my back, but not my face. The opposite. But then we see that God did speak to Moses face to face. And that's when he would take off the veil and speak with God. No man shall see God and live. When you see God, you become God. So that's why you're transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just like Moses was. That's why he put on a veil. Because he was illuminated, enlightened. His face shone. Now, I was going to end the video, but I really need to keep going, honestly, to, to end this correctly. So we all with unveiled face behold as in a mirror, the glory of God and are changed into the same image. Now, what is the mirror? Where is the veil? <laughs> Remember this. We use great plainness of speech, not as Moses put a veil on his face that the children couldn't write, but their minds are blinded for until this day remain at the veil untaken away on the reading of the Old Testament. That's where the veil is. That's the mirror. That's where you have to remove the veil in order, right? So let me scroll down. But we all with open face, unveiled face, behold as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord and are changed into the same image from glory to glory. It's the same thing. The veil is over the Old Testament. The veil is over Moses. That's where the veil is. That's what's stopping you from being what you're not seeing. What the veil is causing you to not see is the truth about the Old Testament and the truth about Moses. Now, most people will say, I agree with you because the truth about that is Jesus. Right. The veil is under with. But let's go to this. Let's see what Paul's ministry actually was, because a lot of people don't understand this. For now we rejoice in my sufferings, um, for now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ and my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me to you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but is now been made manifest, the mystery. What did Jesus say? He's, why did he say he spoke in parables? He spoke in parables so that people wouldn't get the mystery of the kingdom because it was given to his disciples to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but not the masses. So even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages, from generations, but is now made manifest to his saints. Right. What is that mystery? 
to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. How did Paul just say we get to the glory? Removing the veil and seeing in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And then we are transformed into what we see in the mirror from glory to glory. Christ in you. What has to be removed is your veil, your flesh, your flesh. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Spirit gives birth to spirit. What is blocking your spirit from being seen, the Christ within you is your flesh. Look at this. People say, no, you don't have Christ in you until you accept Christ. Look what it says. The mystery has been hidden from ages, from generations, but is now made manifest that Christ is in you. It was hidden since when? Let's look at another one. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This is what Paul's gospel is. And Paul's gospels were written before the gospels were written. They're just not placed in the Bible in, in chronological order. But Paul's gospel should be in the Bible first because they were written first. It says, establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret since the world began. That's why born again, the word again means from the beginning. The revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but is made manifest by how? How is it made manifest? By the scriptures of the prophets. This is Paul's gospel. The scriptures of the prophets, you know what those are also called? They're also called the Old Testament. This here, the Old Testament, where he said there was a veil. So when he says his his ministry is the revelation, that word revelation means removal of veil, the revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret since the world began. Remember, the mystery that was kept secret since the world began is that Christ is in you and that is the hope of glory. That's his gospel. He shows you that by removing the veil from the Old Testament scriptures. That's how he shows you. He does that by removing the veil from God's commandments, Moses' face. That's how he shows you. That's what he does. That's his ministry. People don't get that. So, once again, for now we see through a mirror and an enigma, but then face to face. And then we have here, we all behold with unveiled faces as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord and are changed into the same image. But what is he calling the mirror here? The Old Testament, Moses's face. What does that mean? Because when he was writing his letters, there was no New Testament. The New Testament was from Jeremiah 31. <laughs> it was about the law not being written on tablets of clay, but being in you. The law is the nature of God. It is the spirit of God. The law is a symbol of the spirit of God. That's why Paul calls one the dead letter and then he calls the other the spirit. That's why the law, the Old Testament, the Torah was given on the day of Pentecost in the Old Testament. It was also given on the day of Pentecost in the New Testament in the form of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of God, the law of God is a symbol, a shadow of the spirit of God. It was never meant to be written on tablets outside of you. It was always meant to be in you. You were always supposed to know it. You were always supposed to see it. You were always supposed to walk by it. You were always supposed to identify as a spirit and not as a human being. You were always supposed to walk in Christ. Always. That's the mystery. That's what Paul talks about. Paul talks about mysteries and Jesus talks about mysteries. That makes them mystics. That makes them occult teachers. Because they, they understand a language that hides truth. Jesus spoke in parables to hide truth. People don't understand that. So, you know, if anybody watched this entire thing, of course, we could talk about this in the comments. I don't expect everybody to agree, but those who got it, thank you for watching. And for everyone else, I'll talk to you in the comments. All right, peace.